Something bad has happened. A double-stranded RNA virus has entered your body. It's now on its way to your cell where it's going to inject its nucleic acid into your cell and then produce a boatload of virus babies. At least that's what we are expecting, right? Except it turns out that no virus babies are made. When uh, the viral uh, double-stranded RNA uh, enters your cell or it's injected into your cell, it's supposed to integrate itself with your DNA so that it can produce this mRNA strand which will eventually give you viral proteins. Now these viral proteins are super essential for uh, the formation or for the production of the virus babies. So that means that something is disrupting this entire process in such a way that these viral proteins are not made at all. So if there are no viral proteins, there are no virus babies. So let's dig deep and find out what is this something and how is this disruption really working. Let's take a closer look at the cell and all of these components that I've drawn out. So this is our virus right over here and it has injected that double uh, stranded RNA uh, right into your cell. So this is the double stranded RNA. Whenever the cell senses this viral RNA in its cytoplasm, an enzyme out of nowhere will show up and start chopping this viral RNA into small pieces. This enzyme, it's called dicer. So this is... So this pink colored blob right over here, this is the enzyme dicer and it's going to chop off this really long RNA into really tiny pieces. So after chopping off, it's going to look something like this. So we're just chopping it off. So now you have like really smaller pieces of this longer double stranded RNA. Now this chopping, whenever Dicer chops it off, this chopping leave, leaves behind something that is recognized by this yellow blob over here. Now this yellow blob is a multi enzyme complex. So think of it in this way that whenever Dicer chops off the longer RNA, it uh, leaves this neon sticker at the end of each chopping and this neon sticker is recognized only by this yellow colored multi enzyme complex. So the minute it sees all any tiny RNA or any small piece of RNA with that neon sticker, it's going to quickly bind itself or bind that piece of RNA with itself. Now, once these smaller RNA pieces are loaded onto this uh, multi-enzyme yellow colored complex right over here, it's going to split the RNA into its strands. So remember, this is a double stranded RNA. I'll just write it down so nobody forgets, including me. So if this, if this is the double stranded RNA, it's chopped down and these are still double stranded. So Let's remember that. And when it is split apart, these two strands, they completely separate. So one of these strands, it runs in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction. And this is the sense strand. So this is the sense strand. And there's another strand which runs in the opposite direction. And this is called the anti sense strand. Now, what this complex is going to do, it's going to get rid of this uh, sense strand and hold on to this anti-sense strand. Now, can you guess why that is so? Why are we sticking with the anti-sense strand and not with the sense strand? Why can't we uh, reverse this whole thing? Why can't we uh, get rid of the anti-sense one and stick to the sense, uh, sense strand instead? Well, so you see that this complex, it's going to, it has a purpose for this sense strand, anti-sense strand. What it's going to do, it's going to use this anti-sense strand as a guide and look for its complementary mRNA. Now, if you remember in DNA replication, we had a, a coding strand and a non-coding strand, right? So the non-coding strand is the antique uh, sense strand. That's the one that we use as a template to produce an mRNA. So if over here I start writing it down, so okay. So if this pink one is the anti-sense strand and then uh, 
this anti sense strand will act as a template to which an mrna strand will be formed so if this is the anti sense strand then this is the mrna strand so in that case what will happen this anti sense strand is running in the 3 5 three prime five prime direction so the mrna strand that will be produced it will run in just the opposite direction and it will have the complementary base pairs to this anti strand so which is why this mrna will bind with this anti sense strand right like it's it's complementary to one another because of the base pairs of so the complementary base pairs so similarly and this was the anti sense dna that we were talking about right so similarly this anti sense rna let's not forget this is an rna so this anti sense rna works in a very similar manner so this anti sense rna will look for its complementary base pairs in the mrna sequence and look for that mrna which is complementary to it and once it finds it out it's going to bind to that mrna right and if we can and if we had chosen the sense strand instead then the sense strand will never be uh, used as a guide or it will never act as a guide because this sense strand and this mrna strand they will have the same base pairs how will it even bind right they are they both work in the same they are both uh working in the same direction or they run in the same direction and at the same time they have the same complement say same base pairs so the sense strand will never work but the anti sense strand will so because of this uh, relationship that it has the anti sense strand will quickly find the mrna sequence which is complementary to it and once this and why do we need to even find this mrna strand at all right this complementary mrna strand because we want to get rid of this strand completely so once the complex finds out or once the complex uses this anti sense strand to find the complementary mrna it's going to release these certain types of enzymes do you see this pink colored scissors i have drawn out so this is a type of enzyme called slicer so i'll just type it down this is slicer i don't know why i keep saying type it's writing it down anyway so this is the slicer enzyme and what it's going to do it's going to chop off this mrna into pieces and if this mrna is chopped off these viral proteins won't be produced at all so if there are no viral proteins there are no virus babies so do you see what really went down not only are we eliminating this double stranded rna that the virus had injected into our cell but we're also getting rid of any mrna that can possibly produce viral protein so if this virus was sneaky enough to still have some mrna produced we are also getting rid of that so there's no mrna no double stranded rna left anymore no viral proteins absolutely no virus babies so this entire process in which several enzymes help rna to disrupt or interfere itself is called rna interference so i will write this down possibly in a different color so this is rna interference or in short we call it rna small i so this entire process is called in uh, rna interference and all of these components of this process have their own names as well for example when dicer chops off this longer double stranded rna then it gives these really smaller pieces of rna right then these are called literally small interfering rna or si rna so i couldn't write the whole thing because i don't have space so let's write it somewhere else let's move this a little bit here so s i wait both needs to be small so this can't be capital so s i r n a this stands for small interfering interfering i need more space clearly interfering r n a 
This is the same RNA that has the neon stickers attached to it, the same stickers which will be recognized by this yellow blob of a complex. And this complex, it also has a name of its own. It's called RISC. And if we expand that, then it comes to RNA induced silencing complex. Now, why silencing complex? Why are we calling it a silencing complex? So essentially, when we are stopping this mRNA from translating into its proteins, we are actually stopping a gene from expressing itself. So in a way, we are silencing the gene. So which is why this entire process of RNA interference or RNAi is called, is also called uh, gene silencing or gene knockdown. So this entire process is also called gene silencing or knockdown. But RNA interference doesn't just protect you or uh, defend you from these outside threats like viral RNAs. It also protects you from inside threats. And one of these threats, uh, they come in the form of something called micro RNA. So I'll write it down here. It's called micro RNA or in short, we call it small m, small i, m i RNA. So these micro RNAs have been long associated with the development of various types of cancer. If we don't get rid of them, we might succumb to uh, cancer more often. Thankfully, RNA interference can also play a part and get rid of these micro RNAs as well. So how does that happen? So one of the things about micro RNA, again, let's zoom in. Okay, so this over here that you can see this hair hair pin like structure over here, this is the micro RNA. So we'll just write it down. This is the micro RNA. Now, when so the thing about a micro RNA is that it's actually a, a single stranded RNA uh, sequence. But what it does, it fold back folds back on itself and with the help of this forming this uh, hairpin like loop structure and it forms a structure something similar to this. So it also has a sense and an antisense strand, uh, although it started out as a single stranded uh, RNA sequence. Now, when this happens, then Dicer, what it's going to do, it's going to come over here and chop off this uh, hairpin structure right from the middle. So this hairpin structure, it will chop it off like this. Then what is remaining from this is this uh, double stranded uh, miRNA. This is also an miRNA. And this looks very similar to the small interfering RNA mm -hmm. from that viral RNA cycle that or the process that we saw this one. So these two are very similar to one another. They both have two strands and they both have the same number of base pairs. So they're pretty look uh, pretty similar looking. So again, the entire process now flows as it goes on for our uh, viral RNA process. Again, risk shows up and it's going to bind to uh, this mRNA um, sequence, uh, miRNA sequence the micro RNA sequence uh, and then it's going to split this into two strands the sense and the antisense strand once again and it will get rid of the and a sense strand and it will keep only the antisense strand and it's going to look for its complementary mRNA and find that and then slicers are going to show up and cut off this mRNA no mRNA no proteins so RNA interference is very specific that way, like it will fo follow a very specific path and it will kind of stick to that. And which is exactly what happens here. It is so precise. It has this one pathway to follow. It will only chop off those complementary mRNAs that 
it uh, binds with this antisense strand and it sticks to that. It doesn't really deviate much, which is why RNA interference or this entire process has become a breakthrough in the medical field, uh, not just medical field, but in biology in general. So and its applications, there are so many applications of RNA interference that we would actually need another whole video to just talk about them.